Last time on Taking the Lunge. They shouldn't be aspiring to change the number on the scale. They should be aspiring to be able to look good in their, their individual pair of skinny jeans, whatever skinny jeans means to that person. So this is a swimsuit that um, I bought for myself um, in New York, and I really have only worn it once so far in Dallas. So I need to start wearing this in Chicago now that it is nice and beautiful out. Oh my God, they almost fit. <laughs> I don't have to lay down to close them. That's the whole thing with skinny jeans. I can't believe I am doing this. I want to never eat again. <laughs> so this is as far as they go. Oh God, help me. This is me now. And if there are any women watching, you know that I'm sucking it up and about to faint, holding my stomach in. So the goal here is to get to the point where I can wear these pants once again. So one of the things that I, I think is very important is to get people away from looking at the scale and looking at the scale as a measure of, of how healthy and fit that they are and putting a lot of worth into that. It's, there's a lot of other pieces that get added into this puzzle and I think that that's what's important for people to look at. This is the story of five people embarking on a unique fitness journey to achieve their individual goals for better health and wellness. Through the expert guidance of their own personal trainer, each is learning how to fit fitness into their everyday life and is taking the lunge toward a healthier lifestyle. This is pretty exciting. Most of the clients I work with uh, are always interested in you know, improving their nutritional habits, which I highly recommend because that's just as important as the, uh, the exercise side of things for getting results and feeling better and living longer. And if I'm home, I can have really good eating habits at home here. No, not even so much here. Perfect eating habits in Florida. Perfect. My nutritional habits are awful. They really are. My food habits are really bad. I cut out the fast food a long time ago. You won't see them at McDonald's or Burger King or, or any of those places. So this is my shelf. It should be filled with a bunch of work stuff, but as you can see, it's basically filled with everything I eat around here. At home, I'm a social butterfly. I'm out to breakfast, lunch, and dinner almost every single day. Because when I'm home, everybody's calling me for either a business meal or a personal meal, and so I eat out a lot. And I'm a foodie. So as much as I like to go and order chicken salad, if there's a great menu, I am inclined to try it. Not even in my, my file cabinet drawers, it's like I don't have files, I have like all sorts of like these supplements that my, my trainer has me on, vitamins, so people around here think I'm a little crazy because I don't drink coffee. I like walk around the office drinking these protein shakes like pretty much constantly throughout the day. We do cook a lot at home, um, we, we are a vegetable vegetable eating family. We do eat vegetables. We've got some frozen fish. The thing that we're having the most problem is, uh, is portions. Like when you cook at home, um, you know, I'm making too much and I'm eating too much. Uh, so I'm eating, I'm not eating as bad as per se like someone who eats out on a daily basis, but I'm eating too much <laughs> at home. You should always eat until you're, you're no longer hungry, not until you're full. And then uh, don't wait until you're starving to eat because the whole idea is you want to keep your blood sugar on an even keel. I also have an incredible sweet tooth. And so I, you know, I can't say no to desserts all the time. So I'm always going to have that balance. I mean, I'm realistic about it. But when I'm home, I like to cook. And I'm a gourmet cook. I ran a gourmet catering business for seven years called The Happy Cooker. Get it? And when I cook, I don't want to make a basic turkey breast. I want to make some gourmet meal. But on the weekends, you know, you know, we're that typical family where Friday night is pizza night, you know, so we're getting pizza. But the bad part is, is I like pepperoni, someone else likes sausage, so we all get our own pizzas. <laughs> so I'm eating my whole own pizza by myself. Um, I mean, it stretches out over two hours, you know, I eat it in two hours, but I'm eating a whole pizza. I just want to go out to eat. I am. That's my biggest struggle. So you know, you are, have two minutes to run out and grab something at the convenience store. You know, it, the logic tells you to grab you know, something that says, you know, reduce fat or reduce calories or, you know, diet or light or whatever. Um, and that's not the case. And that used to be my, my protocol, you know. Just, you know, go get the, the, the low, fat, low fat chips and the, and the Diet Coke. And because they're diet and low fat, I can just, you know, have two or three of them.
We try, we try to make food at least a few times a week, but sometimes we do fall back in the bad habits of going someplace. Um, we generally like shop as we go because we don't like things to go bad or waste, so. I love golden nugget pancakes. Some days it's either, you know, a piece of chocolate or a shot of tequila, you know, one of the two. <laughs> Apples, you know, I do try to have fresh fruit and vegetables in the house. Um, but then it seems like we fall back a lot on, you know, pastas and stuff, which is probably not a good thing. So my husband says that my favorite, um, my favorite vegetable is pizza, my favorite fruit is ice cream. Those are really like my favorite junk food. I don't do a whole lot of snacking. I pretty much stick to my three, three meals. Um, I have read in some places that you should have a fourth and fifth meal just to keep your metabolism going. I've done that and I, never, I feel like I just eat more or I'll forget to have that extra meal and I'll have it like right before I'm gonna have dinner anyway. So I've kind of stopped, uh, kind of stopped that plan. Eating every you know, three to five hours is best and if you're eating the right type of meals that uh, you should not be hungry in between meals. If you're getting hungry within an hour or two after you eat, that just kind of shows you you're eating the wrong type of foods. I don't believe in diets personally. I think that diets are actually destructive. Um, I think what's really important is teaching people how to eat and what they should be eating and not getting on an on again, off again program where I'm on this six week diet and I'm gonna lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever, whatever the diet promises. And then after that, you go back to your old ways, you gain the weight back even more, and then maybe you're, you go back and get on the diet again. Um, and it's just a cycle as opposed to uh, really learning about nutrition, really learning about what you're putting in your body and, and using that as a skill. For me, one of the biggest learnings is just, you know, things that are marketed as, you know, diet, foods are not necessarily better for you. And I, you know, <laughs> have a career in marketing. I, I, I should know this of all people, um, but I'm just as gullible to it as anybody else. Uh, my basic nutritional philosophy has always been eat food that's as close to nature as possible, meaning the more man touches it and processes it, the more you want to avoid it. Try to stick with uh, Foods in their most natural state, you know, lightly cooked or steamed is, is fine, um, but avoiding, you know, a lot of processed foods like grains and cereals and pastas and breads, a lot of the starchy things. You know, a, a, a healthy snack of, you know, of, of, of vegetables, even with it, if it's with a, you know, a full fat dipper dressing that's, you know, all natural is much better than, you know, this manipulated, um, manipulated food that's marketed as, as, as diet food. I'm at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. I'm at Miami Beach now. I'm in front of the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. I'm here on the beautiful island of Mauritius. I'm in Central Park here in New York City. I need a change of scenery, I need a change of pace. And it's a workout that I can actually do anywhere, and I really appreciate that. The good of it is it, it, it makes you come back, it holds you accountable. The inner train changed my life. I mean, it was just fantastic. We should get a cat. I'm bored with this room. Babe, do you want to go visit my mother this weekend? Let's elope. I, I, I guess my nutrition first started going a little bit downhill when I was starting to hit my teenage years a little bit when I was like 12, 13. You know, I, remember, I remember you know going out to dinner and ordering actually two things on the menu. Um, you know, and the parents were fine with that. I come home from school and as opposed to just having a you know little healthy snack, I eat the whole box or something like that. And I think part of it was um, just having a really rough time going through those sort of middle school, teenage kind of years, not really having a lot of friends and. Um, you know, just coming home and basically eating and watching TV, being in my own little world. And seventh grade was a real turning point for me. I had a really hard, um, hard year in school, not academically, but just in terms of, you know, 
making new friends at a new school, and on top of that, I um, was in a bicycle accident, and I broke my arm in two places, and I basically was stuck on the couch for basically three months. Uh, and that was, I think, the first time when I really just started basically eating, you know, out of control, just because I really had nothing else to do. You know, I knew I, you know, eating too much, eating bad things, but, you know, it all started by people, you know, bringing cookies and cakes, and, you know, I'd just be sitting on the couch miserable, and I'd just eat it all. Um, you know, then one day I was looking at myself in high school, and I was like, oh, I'm fat, this is terrible. Um, and that was sort of the turning point, like, end of my high school years, beginning of college, when I knew, like, okay, totally, totally need to, to change uh, my habits. I never had a huge problem, like, I never was obese or, you know, anything. Um, but to get to a point where, you know, I remember I was at like, you know, a doctor's appointment when I was maybe 13 or 14, and the doctor said to me, you know, you should consider losing a little bit of weight. And I was kind of shocked, you know, because it was kind of before the age where I was really starting to look at myself, like, you know, making sure I'm, you know, attractive enough physically. So I never really um, thought I was fat until somebody else told me. But it wasn't really until I, you know, went to college that I really, you know, could fully kind of take control because you're sort of dictating all your own portions yourself and, you know, basically choosing everything that you, you put on your plate. You know, back then, you know, I would eat, you know, pretty much like a food pyramid, like any kind of carbs I want, regardless of, you know, whether they were processed or had sugar in them. Um, you know, I eat greasy food, processed food, um, you know, things that I thought were healthy, but, you know, really weren't. Like, even when I would try to do a, a low-carb diet, you know, I'd be eating, like, hot dogs and stuff, you know, which is terrible. It's not as easy as just saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to follow the food pyramid or I'm going to, you know, do a low-carb diet. You know, you can think you're eating healthy and actually be doing, like, a lot of damage, so. Uh, simple philosophy is you kind of eat like your great-great-grandparents ate. If they wouldn't have recognized it as food, then you probably don't want to be eating it. Um, one of the most surprising things comes when I discuss nutrition with people is when I recommend, let's say, eat butter instead of margarine or Smart Balance or Smart Beet, uh, and they're surprised. You know, oh, I can have butter. Wow, that's that's amazing. But butter is as close to nature as you can get. There's one ingredient in butter, and that's cream. Whereas if you look at Smart Balance, there's, I believe, 17 ingredients in Smart Balance, and it's man-made concoction of different types of oil blends that's supposedly supposed to be healthier for you than, than something that nature has come up with on its own. So in my experience, the more we fight or go against what nature intended us to have in our bodies and what we've evolved to eat, the more problems we experience. If I were, you know, was feeling down or um, stressed out or, um, bored, quite frankly, you know, I would just, just eat. I think that was really the, the start of, you know, me developing some pretty bad eating habits, you know, m m almost like turning to, to food as, as comfort. And I'd be, you know, I, you know, I could certainly be eating less or eating healthier, but I just, I just didn't care, you know, until one day, the, you know, I looked in the mirror and I was like, this is, this is not, you know, acceptable. This is not who, this is not how, the image I want to present to the world. My philosophy and approach to nutrition is is changing. Um, I've recently been able to do like a lot of research on my own and have some good conversations with my trainer online. Um, and we've been able to put together I, what I feel like is a pretty good plan for me that's helped me sort of learn some things. I've been working with Brian for uh, for quite a while and what I'm doing with him is, is ramping up his intensity on his workouts and we're cutting his carbs down a little more and getting the, up his protein intake. And that's going to help him recover a little bit more and continue to progress. I've done all sorts of diets. I've done everything from a two-day juice cleanse to a all-protein, no-carb diet with my meals. I just drink water. I try to drink a glass of water between meals too. Before I would always drink diet coke, diet soft drinks, you know, because you, you think like, oh, diet, you know, zero calories, zero carbs, zero sugar must be healthy for you, right? The big change I've made is to give up sugary drinks. Um, you know, before, you know, my favorite drinks were, you know, frozen drinks, frozen, um, you know, daiquiris, margaritas, Long Islands, you know, and you just sort of think like, well, you know, an alcoholic drink is an alcoholic drink. Not the case. There's about 800 calories in a Long Island, there's about 100 calories in a vodka soda. So, uh, big, big difference. So, in terms of liquor drinks, I really just try to stick to vodka sodas now, uh, or, 
um, red wine. Because just like nutrition, when it comes to food, there's an expert out there that you know is, is for it and against it. I've heard good and bad things about different kinds of fats, different kinds of carbs. There's people out there who champion wheat. There's a guy who wrote a book that says no wheat's the you know what makes you fat. Uh, and really, you can find that pros and cons for just about any kind of food. So I mean, you really, really have to do your homework and talk to people and. And, and read up on stuff. And plus right now I'm at that point in my career where I'm you know, doing all this traveling and I feel kind of like a, a little bit of a, like a, a rock star, you know, and you know, when they come down the plane and with the car, you hell yeah, I want the ice cream and the, and the champagne and bring it on, you know. I'm not gonna sit there and say, oh no, I'm gonna eat my carrot that I packed, you know. Who wants to do that? The other thing that's a challenge when I travel is, is client dinners too, you know, and particularly, I mean, I have a client that's, um, you know, in an Asian country and it's just part of their culture that when they take you to dinner you have to eat it to be respectful and you have to eat all of it. I mean even leaving a little bit on your plate it sends a message that you know you didn't like the food and that's you know extremely disrespectful so I mean just last week they took us to I mean literally an eight course dinner. I mean it was like a three hour meal and you do you really have to basically eat everything unless you you know want to make up something up front like you're a vegetarian or whatnot but um, I'm certainly not about to do that. So it, it, there are certain struggles, you know, and you know, if, if that, when things come up that you literally can't get around like that, I mean, it's just, you know, you try to compensate for them some way, you know, go for a little bit of an extra job the next day or, or you know, make a healthier choice afterwards. A lot of clients always tell me, you know, well, I eat out a lot, so it's hard for me to eat healthy when I think it's actually easier to uh, eat healthy when you're, when you're out at a restaurant or when you're traveling because you simply tell waiter what you want and good restaurants stay in business by pleasing you. Uh, you don't always have to go off what's on the menu. You can customize anything you want and most restaurants will try to cater to you as best they can. So when you are eating out, always focus on your protein first. Uh, instead of having the rice or potatoes or you know something starch, starchy like that, you stick with uh, vegetables and stuff yourself with that. And you're, you're generally so full by the end of your meal that you're not even tempted by dessert. To me, the ninety percent of it is just having a plan in place. Like I know it sounds cheesy, but that line, like failing to plan is planning to fail. That's totally true. That's totally true for me. Like if I have a week where you know I don't literally write down what I want to eat, like I, I end up looking back. I, the week will go by and I look back on it and I think, oh, I, I didn't have a very good week. You know, I, I had a you know margarita here and I had you know the the, the chips there and you know. I had that spaghetti dinner when we, when we ordered, you know, take out at work that one night and, oh, and, you know, my roommate brought home a <laughs> giant box of pizza and I came home and ate half of it, you know? Like, this is how big, like, one of these slices of pizza is. <laughs> so, these are the kinds of problems that happen when you fail to have a plan because you come home and you find a, a mountain of food on your, uh, on your kitchen table or in your office or, or wherever, um, and you sort of, look back on it and it's like, you know, God, what, what, what the heck did I do? What was I thinking? And the answer is I didn't have a plan. If you set aside, uh, let's say Sunday is your, uh, is your cheat day, then you can kind of start to plan for that and save up all those uh, bad choice foods and eat them on that day. And then when you overdose on that stuff, you'll, you can see how it runs you down and makes you feel lethargic and it kind of reminds you of why you're eating healthy. So it, helps you stick to your plan the rest of the week. So to me, if I eat when I'm not hungry, just a little bit, you know, if I know I'm gonna be hungry really, like five o'clock usually is when I start to get really hungry. So if I have a protein shake at 4.30, I know like I'm good until like seven o'clock when I already have my next meal plan for when I get home from the gym. So it's a really good way to, you know, just avoid these unexpected pitfalls that really can be, you know, really can destroy your, your, your goals when it comes to nutrition. You know, one day I would love to pick up the paper and read about a man killing a bear with his bare hands. Or, or the government giving people 14-foot trampolines. Or everyone's giving a tiger to ride to work. Or popsicles that make you think faster. If I was writing the newspaper, that's what you'd read. You'd read it every day. It's just the same thing every day. Hi, I'm Chris.
Chris Freitag, National Health and Fitness Expert. There are tons of whey protein products out there today, so why choose BiPro? BiPro is lactose free. BiPro is flavorless. BiPro contains no artificial sweeteners. BiPro is an isolate. That means it has a higher purity level than a concentrate. BiPro is carb free. For more information, go to BiProUSA.com. I've done juicing and I've done, um, you know, whatever, the lemonade diet and I've done, you know, I've been vegan for a very long time and, you know, just, you know, only protein, only carbs, only vegetables, only fruits, like, you name it, I've done it. So, you know, it doesn't work, right? It's all really extreme. So what's, it's, it's really about moderation and, and just being good and gentle and finding balance, what really works for you. So under simple terms, you kind of shop around that perimeter of your grocery store where all the fresh food is. Think of it as uh, eat foods that will spoil, but eat them before they spoil. And those are the foods that will give you the biggest impact on your health and your nutrition and give you uh, the best results. Everything in moderation is okay. You know, it's not so much just making one food group evil, it's more about making smart choices, but you know, making making also smaller choices at times. Uh, the thing I used to like to say is like the, the low carb people tell you don't eat the cheeseburger and fries because of the fries and the bun and then and the low fat people say don't eat it because of the burger and I say well, just don't eat it and don't worry about why you're not eating it. Well, it's, it's hard, you know, there's so much food that's accessible to you, you know, there's so much and you get bombarded on a daily basis of what's good for you and what's not good for you and then it changes the next day so I think that uh, in general, you know, you just kind of fall back on your old habits when you get confused or if the information is just too overwhelming. Trying to get him to, to you know, eat to live, not just live to eat. He really needs to, to learn um, why it's important to eat, you know, almonds and more higher protein foods versus all the sugary, snacky stuff that just makes you feel good at the time and then you feel, you know, cruddy 30 minutes later, so. You should always eat until you're, you're no longer hungry, not until you're full. And then uh, don't wait until you're starving to eat because the whole idea is you want to keep your blood sugar on an even keel. And that plus the fact that I've reached this goal that I haven't reached in decades and all the compliments that come with it and feeling good about myself and all the, I'm a fashionista, so all the new clothes and stuff, um, that keeps me more aware of the food thing just kind of want to focus on getting protein in every meal and some good fat and then your carbs are mainly the source of vegetables and fruit. I'm doing things like eating carbs which is something that I would never have done before because I was always like low carb, no calorie. I was mixing up like all these different diets that weren't necessarily aligned with like the specific thing that I wanted to achieve. Um, so being able to really separate out like what are the things I want to achieve, being able to focus on them you know, exclusively one at a time and then be able to align a fitness and a diet program specifically to those goals has worked really well for me. But I don't have that sort of, um, the balance of like the working out and the food and so when it's not one is the other. When I haven't drifted off into working out, I, you know, I drift off on eating, you know, so and it's, it's just hard to balance with everything that I have going on. My sister-in-law, you know, they're really health conscious and, um, you know, they're doing you know, uh, marathons and triathlons and, you know, they're, you know, steady working. I'm like the last to not be 100% dedicated to it, it seems. I'm not very hungry in the morning, so it's hard for me to have breakfast, but I try to have something light just to get my metabolism going, just to get something in my stomach so I can go work out effectively. I'm not uh, passing out or I'm not dying for a, you know, egg McMuffin or whatever in the morning as I'm trying to work out. 80% of the time, try to eat healthy and good clean food. 20% of the time, you can drift a little bit and you know relax those guidelines. If you want to get, if you're a little more motivated and wanted to get in shape for bathing suit season or the too tight pants test, you can cut that back to a 90-10. It's just an awareness for me. It's a constant struggle. When you travel, I don't always have control of what I eat. I'm there and I, I can't call ahead and say, order this special meal for me sometimes. I'm at a country club, I'm at somebody's company. So I'm you know, trying to do the best I can with what's given to me. 
Uh, the other problem I have is my company likes to eat and they like to feed us. Oh. So there'll be, often there are meetings around lunchtime well, they'll bring in lunch. They've got barbecue, they've got Italian sausage, they've got the beef, they've got everything that's not good for you, but that I love. And it's, it's you know, when it's there and it's free and they buy enough for about three times as many people as we have in the meeting, you overeat just because it's there. At least I overeat. And as I have gotten older, I can tell. I can feel it. I can feel sluggish. And I know that I'm eating, you know, out of stress. My trainer told me to keep a food journal, which is stressful. <laughs> that stresses me out more than the, the workouts itself. For people that are you know just starting out, like definitely the first step is to keep a log of everything you eat. You know, even before you implement a plan, just you know, say, okay, I'm just gonna eat normally this week and write literally everything down we eat and drink. Um, and what time and how much too. So then you can as a as a starting place sort of look back and figure out, okay, what are what are my obstacles? What's what's tripping tri tripping me up? I see sort of life in general as this like sort of infinity symbol, right? Where you're kind of cycling through and sometimes you're in this sort of positive cycle, you know, and you're kind of over here, you know, and sometimes you're in this negative side and, you know, something triggers you to cross that line. And so right now I'm in the sort of negative side of the cycle where, like, you know, I just, I'm tired and I just want to eat pizza and I want pizza to triggers me to drink soda and I don't really sleep well, I have to go work done, ugh, you know, it's this negative cycle. And and there is always something that has to trigger you to move into this positive cycle. Realize every time you eat, you're either moving towards your goals or away from your goals. It, it is challenging just day to day to stick to a diet, especially when you live a life like I do, where you're constantly eating out. Um, one, because it can be socially awkward, you know, when everybody just points to something on the menu and you have to be the jerk who says, oh, can you tell me how many carbs are in your salad dressing or whatever? But I would say, you know, you just have to. Be proud of the fact that you know you're taking so much you know concern into into your diet and to, over your own health. You know, you know I I first thought people would, would you know would laugh at me, but it actually has become like a conversation starter. It's been interesting. I've actually converted a few people into you know into healthier eating when I sort of tell them like, oh, do well, actually you know you shouldn't get the diet coke or actually you know here's what I think about this. And you know there are a lot of people who are really um, really open to that, and I've seen like them change some of their habits too. So that actually can be. Um, it actually can be kind of exciting.